now I gotta read the music. <laughs> oh no, how will you ever manage? Thank you, John, for the beautiful piano music welcoming us to worship on this Lord's Day. Glad you could join us as we gather together to thank and praise God for all the blessings bestowed upon us. Our opening hymn, a beautiful praise song, My Soul Proclaims the Greatness of the Lord. You will join in. and say howdy to our neighbor if you didn't already. Good morning, Jim. Good morning, neighbor. <laughs> John, good morning. We want to say special welcome to our guests and visitors and special happy Father's Day to all our fathers, uh, those that have gone before us, uh, those coming after us as we remember the gift of uh, parenthood, fathers, mothers, sons and daughters, uh, the whole human family. We welcome those streaming online. Glad you could join us on this Father's Day as we worship together. And we're going to join together in a beautiful Father's Day litany by Laura Kelly. I'll read the light print if you'll read the bold. God of love, today we ask your blessing on all who give their lives with a father's love. Bless no, fathers, fathers, grandfathers, grandfathers. Bless, bless loving uncles and caring godfathers. Bless fathers who await the birth of their child with joy. Bless men who did not expect or want to become fathers. Bless men who embrace fatherhood through adoption or foster parenting. Remarried or single parenthood. Bless men still waiting and hoping to become fathers. Bless fathers whose work takes them away from their children. Bless fathers whose work is with their children. 
Bless fathers whose lives are shaped by war, poverty, or violence. Bless fathers who work for peace, freedom, and justice. Bless teachers and mentors who serve as father figures. Bless priests and ministers who lead us as loving parents. Bless men who are separated from their children by force or choice. Bless families without fathers and all who love in abundance in their absence. Bless fathers who have lost a child. Bless families who have lost their father. Bless all whose fathers were loving. Bless all whose fathers failed to meet their needs for love. Bless all who celebrate today. Bless all who struggle today. In the name of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we pray, amen. Our hymn of praise, praise to the Lord. Let us join together in prayer as printed on the screen. God of compassion, you have opened the way for us and brought us to yourself. Pour your love into our hearts that overflowing with joy, we may freely share the blessings of your realm and faithfully proclaim the good news of your son, Jesus Christ, our savior and Lord, amen. Do we have any kids here today that like to come up and help me out? Come on down. Can you hold this microphone for me? See what I got there? Yeah. Listen to it. Do you guys 
have a favorite happy sound? If you could hear something, what would be a happy sound to you? Like what? Say it again. Waves. Okay, how about you? Um, the sound of the rainforest. Okay, how about you guys? Any happy sounds? Any of you guys got a happy sound? Church. Church. Oh, okay, you get a point for that one. <laughs> well, today we're going to hear a psalm. It's one of my favorites, Psalm 100. Easy to remember, 100. It says, make a joyful noise to the Lord. Be glad, all you land. Make a joyful or happy noise to the Lord. Why would God want us to hear, why, why would God want us to make happy or joyful noises to God? You think you know why? Because it's a way to praise God, isn't it? And thank God for being our loving Father, for sending us Jesus, for giving us all the blessings. So when Jesus prayed, you know what he called God? Abba, which is another word for daddy because Jesus was close to God and wants us to be. Here's a little chorus to help us remember. God wants to be our daddy, our Abba. It goes like this. Abba, Abba, Father, you are the potter, I am the clay. You guys help us out. Abba, Abba, Father, you are the potter, I am the clay. Yeah, you guys ever work with clay? Yeah, think of that clay as who we are, and God is shaping us to be just like Jesus. One more time. Abba, Abba, Father, you are the potter, I am the clay, the work of your hands. God, thank you for these children and all of us that you are shaping to be just like Jesus, full of love, joy, and peace. In your name we pray. And all God's kids croaked and said, Amen. Amen. Good job. Uh, one of God's kids is going to read our Bible lessons at this point. If she's here. There, yeah. You were sitting over there early. Okay, well, you can do that. Thanks to Jenny. Good morning. The first reading is from Exodus chapter 19, verses 2 through 8a. The Israelites had journeyed from Rephidim, entering the wilderness of Sinai, and camped in the wilderness. Israel camped there in front of the mountain. Then Moses went up to God. The Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to my people, to the house of Jacob, and tell the Israelites, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession out of all the peoples. Indeed, the whole earth is mine, but you shall be for me a priestly kingdom and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the Israelites. So Moses came, summoned the elders of the people, and set before them all these words that the Lord had commanded him. The people all answered as one, everything that the Lord has spoken, we will do. Our psalm is Psalm 100, and we'll read it responsibly. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into God's presence with a song. Know that the Lord is God, our maker, to whom we belong. We are God's people and the sheep of God's pasture. Enter the gates of the Lord with thanksgiving and the courts with praise. Give thanks and bless God's holy name. Good indeed is the Lord whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from age to age.
the second reading, and thank you for starting it out. It's from Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 8. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Please rise. Gospel according to Matthew. The Gospel today is from Matthew chapter 9, verse 35 through chapter 10, verse 8. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew. Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector. John, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus. Simon, the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment give without payment. Here ends the gospel. Praise you, Lord. Take a break. Will the circle be unbroken? Today I want the men to sing Daddy sang bass, the women to sing Mama sang tenor, and all of us can sing Little Brother Join right in there. I remember when I was a lad, times were hard. Sing bass, 
Mama sang tenor, me and little brother were joined right, right in there. Singing seems to help us trouble so. One of these days it won't be long. We'll join them in a song. Daddy sang bass, Mama sang tenor, me and little brother was going right in there. Singing seems to help a troubled soul. One of these days it won't be long, we'll rejoin them in a song. We're going to join the family circle at the throne. Will the circle be unbroken? That's what I'm talking about. That circle, thanks to Jim and Bob for helping out on that good old song that I probably played a hundred times, uh, if not a thousand, with my father. Uh, we'd get together and sing songs, play songs, family gatherings, campouts, birthdays, anniversaries, funerals, and he'd play the harmonica like Jim's going to play today. And Sometimes we do like 10, 12 songs in a row. He would just keep playing till his lips actually started bleeding. I said, Dad, your lips are bleeding. He says, ah, Hades, it's just blood. <laughs> he wanted to keep singing. And we did a lot of singing. Good memories. And one of the gifts I got after Dad passed away some years ago was his box of harmonicas. They still had blood on them. <laughs> Not. Keys from A to G to B flat to F sharp. I'm going, this guy never had any formal musical training. And yet he could pick up a different key and play the song. I'm going, that's what you call a gift, right? Oh, the Beatles never had formal training. They didn't do too bad. <laughs> so when God gives us a gift, we better use it or we? Yes, you know that. That's why God gives us gifts, to use them so we don't lose them, and to bless other people. Well, we didn't always sing and play after work, as the song goes, because sometimes when you work hard, you're just too tired to sing or play. Like that summer day in Holloway when we bailed hay. I'm rhyming some stuff there. You, you pick that up. <laughs> Bailing hay on a summer day in Holloway, small town, western Minnesota. I think about it on hot summer days, because bailing hay is hard work. We were on Uncle Bob and Aunt Barbara's farm in Holloway, beautiful farm. They raised cattle, horses, four beautiful daughters. And Dad and I got to help bale hay. Dad would pick it off the rack, and guess who got to stack it up over my head? Well, I was young and strong then. It was good football prep. But those bales were probably heavier than me. It was hard work. Went all day long. And then we'd have to put it on the chute and then stack it again up in the barn. Whew. We could have used more workers because the harvest was great. Kind of like Jesus looking out at the crowds as we heard in the gospel. 
he saw the crowds, they looked harassed and helpless. Does that sound like you or me sometimes? You ever feel helpless? Yeah. Harassed? Yeah. And he had compassion on them. And he knew there were so many. That's why he said, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. You need more workers. So pray that God would send out more workers out into the harvest. And then he gave them the charge. Cure the sick. Raise the dead. Cast out evil spirits. Announce that the kingdom has come near. Now, not many of us can cure the sick or raise the dead or cast out demons. If you can, you're a special gifted person. But we can point to the one who can do that. He's called the great physician that heals the sick. He's called the resurrection and the life who raises the dead. He's called the deliverer who, who casts out the demons. Which led young Martin Luther to write that beautiful hymn in a time of social upheaval, church conflict, pandemics, the world shaking. He could say, the hordes of devils fill the land all threatening to devour us. We tremble not, unmoved we stand. They can't overpower us. Let this world's tyrant rage. In battle, we'll engage. God's judgment must prevail. God's judgment must prevail. His might is doomed to fail. One little word subdues him. Were they to take our house, goods, honor, child, or spouse? Though life be wrenched away, they can't win the day. The kingdom is ours forever. That's a long time. God's kingdom, which is broken into the world through his son, Jesus Christ, is forever. This God in Christ who wants no one, not one to be left behind, as the Bible says, God is long-suffering and patient, not willing that one should perish, but that all might come to repentance. That's why the good shepherd leaves the 99 for the one lost one. That's why the church was commissioned by Christ to look out into that harvest and know we have to work hard. Spreading the gospel is not easy. It's hard work. We might get ridiculed, rejected, laughed at. Some are even being killed and tortured for sharing Christ today. You know that. It's hard work to bring in the harvest, but that's what we're called to do today especially those feeling helpless and harassed today, that they might hear the good news that in Christ there is healing, not just the physical, which doesn't always come in our time, but the greatest healing, spiritual, that we're re reunited with God for eternity, and that God does cast out any evil. Greater is he that's in us than the one that's in the world. And of course, we know because of Christ's resurrection, he will raise us up to be with him for eternity. St. Paul was a terrorist, bringing terror to Christians, till this loving God turned him around, and he became one of the early great missionaries of the church, who we heard writing today in the letter. It might be well that a person will die for a good person or a righteous but think about Christ dying for you and me while we were still yet sinners. That's called agape, unconditional love. The love of a father that's above all fathers. I don't know what kind of relationship you have or have had with your father, but our loving father is the one who knows us better than we know ourselves, who loves us more than we want to be loved who has a plan for our lives every day. That God who says, in Christ, I've given you new beginnings, a new life, that you might reach out to others. And Lord, help us today by your spirit to see opportunities to share with others the good news that in Christ, 
You have come to heal us, forgive us, and raise us up to be with you for eternity. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. Our next song, John, is? There it is, right there. Let all things now living. That would be you and me. As we do live, let us profess our faith, and not only here, but wherever we go, that others might hear and believe. Let's confess the faith in the words of the Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us join together in prayer now for God's people and the church, all people, according to their needs. Close to home, we want to remember uh, Daryl Bauman on the passing of his uncle Whitey this past week. Also, our sister Gertrude Taft died last week, and her funeral will be this coming Thursday noon at the Burnham Hours Colstead Funeral Home. Let us pray. Lord God, thank you for shining on us today with your love through your son, Jesus Christ for the forgiveness, for the peace, for the promise of everlasting life you give us in Christ. And we confess today that we've not always loved you with our whole heart and our neighbors as ourselves. And thank you that by your death and resurrection, you give us the promise of life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, bless this church and your church throughout the world today especially where there's persecution and oppression, conflict and schism. Pray for all people affected by these things. Hear the cries of the poor and the hungry, the sick and the dying, those caught up in strife and violence and war, for the homeless and the refugees, all who look for mercy and justice and peace. And bless all the peacemakers today who stand in harm's way. Lord, in your mercy. 
Gracious God, thank you for the gift of our children that you place in our midst. Help us daily to find ways to mentor, encourage, and teach them according to your word, that they might know they are loved unconditionally and that you have a plan for each of their lives. Lord, in your mercy. Blessed are those who mourn, you tell us. They will be comforted. We pray for that comfort today for Daryl Bauman and family and the passing of his uncle Whitey. We pray for Gertrude Taft's family and friends as they mourn her passing. And others who mourn to be comforted and cling to that hope of the resurrection to everlasting life, where one day we will be reunited with those that have gone before us. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful Father, we pray you'll tend to those we know to be ill and hospitalized, those facing and recovering from surgeries or undergoing treatments, those who are ill at home. We continue to pray for Tina Langman's Uncle Jerry. Be with Rick Bowers, Oscar Skog, and Harry Bergman. Continue to be with Vicki Anderson and, and Daryl Skog. Be with Bob Berg, Donna Lindbaum, and Sherm Tofar. We thank you for Brad Harmon recovering from his surgery and others we name before you. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. At this time, we'll receive our offerings. The noisy buckets go to help our youth and family ministries. Let us pray. 
Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you've first given us ourselves, our time and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us in the world, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who in the night in which he was betrayed took the bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, given for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup and gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. It's shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in the remembrance of me. And when you pray, pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All are welcome for the Lord's Supper today. You can come up and stand or kneel at the altar, receive the elements of the communion. There's gluten-free wafers in the bread tray. There's wine or grape juice in the wine tray. You could put your empty cups in the baskets when you depart. Please be seated. Communion stewards, please come forward. Thank you. 
Let us pray. We thank you, almighty God, for this healing gift of life, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, to forgive us and heal us, to strengthen us and keep us in your grace, and at the last, bring us to everlasting life. Lord, bless us and keep us. Make your face shine on us and be gracious to us. Lord, look upon us with favor and give us your peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please sign with me. I'm a child of God. I'm loved by God, and I'm not alone. Following worship, you're invited downstairs, uh, Karen Thiesfeld's award-winning cookies. Yeah. Peanut butter and chocolate chip. Get a double dose. Uh, come on down, coffee, tea. Adult Bible study meets in the office wing following worship. Miss Katie Bernard, our youth and family minister, has an announcement for the men. Come on up. Good morning. Morning. We just wanted to say thank you to all the men with us here today um, on Father's Day, and you are loved beyond measure. Haha, <laughs> 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 bad dad joke on Father's Day, right? So, all the men today at either exit, we're going to have these cute little mini keychains. They are three foot measuring tapes. You can take it on the go for all your measuring needs. We'll have them at either exit. Um, happy Father's Day to you all. And also, I just wanted to say that tomorrow, we are doing our first youth beach night at the Chatech City Beach at 5.30. So bring your swimsuit, get ready for fun and some fellowship, and bring a picnic supper. We'll all meet at 5.30, Chatech City Beach. Thank you. And Sandy, you had an announcement about a ministry we can participate in right here in our community. So, such a good ministry. So tell us about that. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Our uh, church wide is involved in this, and we furnish a sweet treat to all the nursing home residents at Meadowview on the third. Tuesday of the month, along with the pastors that send a letter over there to them. And uh, we are in need of someone for July 18th, August 15th, and September 19th. And so six dozen cookies will take care of all the nursing home people. And if you bake or if you want to buy, they need to be here that Tuesday morning by 9 o'clock. And then Ginny Schimmel will take them over to the nursing home and deliver them for us. Oh, Ginny? I just want to add, um, if you prefer to make bars or something else, so people at Meadowbrook, they ask for something that they love, they can make a bar for Okay, nobody will hear that, Jenny, without a microphone. So on my sheet, I have cookies, bars, cupcakes, or any type of sweet treat that you like to make. And, but it has to have at least six dozen uh, in order to take care of all of them. So if you can sign up sometime one of these months, uh, we really appreciate it. And this is a way that we can serve the Lord and do mission work in our community. This is, this is on that back table just outside the glass doors. And if you make extra, make peanut butter or chocolate chip too and just leave them at the church. <laughs> hey kids, come on up. We got to do the closing song to, what's the name of it, uh, Jim? Do Lord. Do Lord. Yeah, grab your instruments right there. Yeah.
Let's hear it for the praise band.